All right, before we start, where is Cam? I don't know where Cam is. Hopefully she'll get on here quickly. Sorry we were running a second light. We were reviewing a couple of things in here ahead of time. Um, I can, I can. All right, so connections. We've been talking about connections and making connections on and off all year long. You've been making connections for years now, actually. It's probably since like you were at Platin. Um, so this is nothing new. Um, but one of those forms is like a text to media connection. We don't talk about that one as much. Well, we talk about like a movie to a book connection. Welcome, Cam. Um, so we've talked about like movie to book connection. We talked about that quite a bit, especially because a lot of books are turned into movies. Um, but think about other types of media that we could connect to. What are some other types of media that you could make connections to? Media could be anything from, I don't know. Let's see what Fiona has to say. I know, like, in Irene, like social media. Maybe. Okay, so like we were talking about in writing yesterday, social media. So maybe you can make a connection to a video you've seen on YouTube, YouTube or TikTok, TikTok or something you've seen on Instagram to a book. Um, what other kinds of media can you think of? So there's social media, there's movies. What else? Be what? Text to self. No, no, no. I'm not talking about different connections. I'm talking about different types of media specifically. Oh. So what other types of media could there be? We've got social media. So like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. Grayson said shows. Show like TV shows. Mm -hmm. Okay, so TV shows, movies. Sam. Wouldn't it be like media, like interview media? Like interviews, like when you read like an interview, like any kind of what, what Cam was just talking about yesterday, being a journalist. So like any kind of um, article that you would read, whether it's online articles or in like an actual magazine, those still exist. And you see them at the grocery store at the checkout line. Your yeah. parents might get certain magazines in the mail. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, so interviews or other like magazine type articles, newspaper. What about... Commercials. Yes. Oh, yeah. I really like snacking. Advertisement. Advertisements. Yeah. Okay. Like that gummy bear ad. Oh, I like a gummy bear ad? Yes. Like, I like the, this. I like the green bear. one where they talk funny. I have not seen this ad about gummy bears and they talk funny. I don't, really, I don't really have that many ads on my TV because I don't have like regular cable. I just have like Hulu and Netflix. So like I don't and Disney. So like I don't. So I don't really see commercials unless Hulu forces me to watch like two of them. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, so I don't have that gummy bear commercial. I don't know. Um, so okay. So I want you to think about any media connections that you might be able to make as we go through chapter three today. And then um, if you're virtual, you've already seen the worksheet today that has um, what we're going to do because we're going to make, we're going to create a media connection today. Can we have a worksheet as we read this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Cause I want you actually listening. Okay. Here we go. Chapter three. The dog wanting disease never did leave me altogether. With the new work I was doing helping Papa, it just kind of burned itself down and left a big sore on my heart. Every time I'd see a coon track down in our fields or along the riverbanks, the old sore would get all festered up and start hurting again. Just when I had given up all hope of ever owning a good hound, something wonderful happened. The good Lord figured I had hurt enough and it was time to lend a helping hand. It all started one day while I was hoeing corn down in our field close to the river. Across the river, a party of fishermen had been camped for several days. I heard the old Maxwell car as it snorted and chugged its way out of the bottoms. I knew they were leaving. Throwing down my hoe, I ran to the river and waded across to a place called the Shannon Ford. I hurried to their campground. It was always a pleasure to prowl where fishermen had camped. I usually could find things, a fish line or a forgotten fishing pole. On one occasion, I found a beautiful knife stuck in the bark of a sycamore tree, forgotten by a careless fisherman. But on that day, 
I found the greatest of treasures, oh a God. sportsman's magazine discarded by the campers. It was a real treasure for a country boy. Because of that magazine, my entire life was changed. Why do you think, there's let's a make a- There's a dog in the magazine. What, what do you mean there's a dog in the magazine? Oh, it's for an advertisement for like free maybe. Okay, an advertisement for like free puppies or something? Fiona is waving her hand wildly. Okay, okay. so I think what it is is that um, there's two hounds for sale, and they're just the ones that he wants, the red hounds and the hounds. Yet they're like really, really cheap, and he's like, oh, I want one for sale. Okay, Fiona says she predicts there's going to be two pups for sale at an advertisement for two pups for sale. Or maybe an auction. Or an auction. Jason, something Coupons. different. Coupons. Okay, sometimes coupon. you see coupons in magazines or coupon. newspapers. Coupon. Coupon. Coupon doesn't matter. Calm your pronunciation coupon, down. All right, here we go. I sat down on a... Zico, what do you think? Yeah, I think, well, like, magazines, like, yeah, like Jason said, they mostly have, well, they have advertisements and coupons in between the articles sometimes. And so maybe there's... <clears throat> yeah, like everyone else said, like an advertisement for two coon hounds that just okay. happens to be free. Affordable, maybe we'll see. All right. I sat down on an old sycamore log and started thumbing through the leaves. On the back pages of the magazine, I came to the for sale section. Dogs for sale. Every kind of dog. I read on and on. They had dogs I'd never heard of, names I couldn't make out. Far down in the right-hand corner, I found an ad that took my breath away. In small letters, it read, Registered Redbone Coon Hound Pups, $25 each. You'll be able to get it. That's like 75 bucks. Okay, so if $75 was equal to 2000 something, 25 is still going to be... About 1000 Sorry. And and for two, if he wants two of them, twenty five each, that takes him right back up to fifty dollars. So he's he's probably well over a thousand dollars equivalent today. That's still really pricey if you're a poor kid living on a farm with nothing to speak of. So, all right. So let's see. The advertisement was from a kennel in Kentucky. Now he lives in Oklahoma, so that's not exactly nearby it's not terribly far but it's if you don't have a car that'd be a quite a far travel on a horse okay the sailors all right i they're not sailing they're in the united states well no like a fisherman yeah fishermen they have boats there's not a boat they're not honey let's pull up a map of the united states real quick we studied the united states no. and where things go oh lord i need to show you where oklahoma and kentucky are no 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 because if you think you're getting there by boat that's not true um all right here we go let me project okay my screen projecting my screen all right guys here we go Oklahoma, where he is at, is right above Texas, where I'm wiggling my pointer at. Okay, he's here. Kentucky is over here. Now, if we were in our car, we could drive there in a day now because we have interstates that go straight there and we have cars that go 60, 70, 80 miles an hour on the interstate, depending on how fast your parents drive. Uh, now, but they, it doesn't sound like that. Do you think they have a car probably? No. no, they probably have a wagon. Like a horse and wagon at best, right? They so it's going to be. Okay, so he said a mule. Yeah. All right, yeah. So by traveling by mule, it's going to take you. A while. A while. I'd say at least a couple of days of traveling the whole Just time. Like okay. Yeah, because Kentucky's this green one right over here. So, oh, yeah. so again, it doesn't look that far to us. But they can't travel. There aren't roads like there were back then. They were just now building the train system. There aren't roads. The cars were just now being invented, and they're like dirt paths. They're not, like, you can't go fast. Like, I think the cars back then probably only went, like, 30, 40 miles per hour. Because think about it. They were open, right? Did they even have, like, roofs on them, really? I don't think so. Okay. So, it's in Kentucky. I read it over and over. 
By the time I had memorized the ad, I was seeing dogs, hearing dogs, and even feeling them. Um, Zeke, yes. I have a fun fact about mules. They're the oldest known uh, hybrid breed. Really? Since about 2000 BC, they were around, it said. That is an interesting fun fact. Google. Okay. All right, here we go. He memorized it. Josie, sorry. It was just a weird fact that I read somewhere. Uh, donkeys sink in quicksand, but mules don't. What? That's not so interesting. And I want to know more about it. I've read it on several things. All right. That's really bizarre. Um, I want to know more about that, but I'm going to have to come back to it. All right. Here we go. Um, all right. I was seeing dogs, hearing dogs, and even feeling them. The magazine was forgotten. I was lost in thought. The brain of an 11-year-old boy can dream some fantastic dreams. How wonderful it could be if I could have those two, two of those pups. Every boy in the country but me had a good hound or two. But $50? How could I ever get $50? I knew I couldn't expect help from Mama and Papa. I remembered a passage from the Bible my mother had read to us. God helps those who help themselves. I thought of the words. I mold them over in my mind. I decided I'd ask God to help me. There on the banks of the Illinois River in the cool shade of the tall white sycamores, I asked God to help me get two hound pups. It wasn't much of a prayer, but it did come right from the heart. When I left the campground of the fishermen, it was late. As I walked along, I could feel the hard bulge of the magazine jammed deep in the pocket of my overalls. The beautiful silence that follows the setting sun had settled over the river bottoms. The coolness of the rich black soil felt good to my bare feet. It was the time of day when all furried things come to life. A big swamp rabbit hopped out on the trail, sat on his haunches, stared at me, and then scampered away. A mother gray squirrel ran out on the limb of a burr oak tree. She barked a warning to the four furry, the four furry balls behind her. They melted from sight in the thick green. A silent gray shadow drifted down from the top of a tall sycamore. There was a squeal and a beating of wings. I heard the tinkle of a bell in the distance ahead. I knew it was Daisy, our milk cow. I'd have to start her on the way home. I took the magazine from my pocket and again I read the ad. Slowly a plan began to form. I'd save the money. I could sell stuff to the fishermen, crawfish, minnows, and fresh vegetables. In berry season, I could sell all the berries I could pick at my grandfather's store. I could trap in the winter. The more I planned, the more real it became. There was the way to get those pups, save my money. I could almost feel the pups in my hands. I planned the little dog house and where to put it, collars I could make myself. And then the thought came, what could I name them? I tried name after name, voicing them out loud. None seemed to fit. Well, there would be plenty of time for names. Right now, there was something more important. $50, a fabulous sum, a fortune, far more money than I had ever seen. Somehow, some way, I was determined to have it. I had 23 cents, a dime I had earned running errands for my grandpa, and 13 cents a fisherman had given me for a can of worms. All right, pause. Fiona. Um, All right. Yeah, I wondered if any of you were going to catch on it. That's uh, his plan to save money is going to take him a long time. Fiona just made a connection. She said when they were looking to get her dog, which now they have Cinder, but before they had Cinder, they were looking on Pet Finder, which is a website where you can look for pets for adoption. And she was looking and they were looking and they saw a dog they liked. And so they were thinking it over for a day. They were talking to her dad about it. And by the time they decided they wanted to call and make an offer on the pup, that one was already adopted. Aww. So he's got to work what he's saying all summer and all winter, he thinks, to save up 50 bucks. That would be a lot. Are the Wait. puppies still going to be Question. available Question. by that time? Are they even going to be pups anymore? When did the fishermen get that? 
the coupons. Can How expire. old are these magazines to begin with? Is it even a current? It can expire. Magazine, okay. <laughs> Josie, what are your thoughts? I was just wondering, um, how much is twenty three cents like right now? Compared to ten dollars. Twenty three cents. No. That's not what I, okay. Point to vote. 23 cents would have been about five bucks today. A little more than five dollars. Five dollars and 16 cents. One cent. All right, here we go. So we've got five bucks equivalent. He's trying to get to what was $50. $50 would have been $1,122. So he's got to get $1,100 and he's got five. So we're not even kind of close. Not even a little bit close. Okay, Grayson. I can, I can also make off of what they said about what Yara said because I was really wanting a cat like a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was this cat, I think his name was like Buddy, and he was really nice, and every time we'd go to PetSmart down there by stoplight, it would, it would follow me around in its cage. Uh -huh. But yeah. by the time we thought about it, there was already about like 50 people wanting to adopt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grace said the same thing happened to him. They saw a cat at PetSmart, or yeah, PetSmart that they were wanting, but by the time they were thinking about doing it, like a bunch of people had already put in their interest on it. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. These chapters are long, yo's. It's actually not that much longer, but, well, you've got an activity to do. So, okay. Um. All right, he has this money. The next morning, I went to the trash pile behind the barn. I was looking for a can, my bank. I picked up several, but they didn't seem to be what I wanted. Then I saw an old Casey baking powder can. It was perfect, long and slender with a good tight lid. I took it down to the creek and scrubbed it with sand until it was bright and new looking. I dropped the 23 cents in the can. The coins looked so small lying there on the shiny bottom, but to me it was a good start. With my finger, I tried to measure how full it would be with $50 in it. Next, I went to the barn and up in the loft. Far back over the hay and up under the eaves, I hid my can. I had a start toward making my dreams come true. 23 cents. I had a good bank safe from the rats and from the rain and snow. All through that summer, I worked like a beaver in the small creek that wormed its way down through our fields. I caught crawfish with my bare hands. I trapped minnows with an old screen wire trap I'd made myself, baited with yellow cornbread from my mom's kitchen. These were sold to the fishermen along with fresh vegetables and roasting ears. I tore my way through the blackberry patches until my hands and feet were scratched raw and red from the thorns. I tramped the hills seeking out the huckleberry bushes. My grandfather paid me 10 cents a bucket for my berries. He's making 10 cents for a whole bucket of berries, and he's trying to get to $50. I get 50 cents at least. Okay. So, I mean, think about how slow it's going to take him to get to 50 when he's making 10 cents at a time, working for a whole day for 10 cents. Not okay. Even, well, not ten cents $10 going to fifty dollars. Okay, so it's not much. A dime. You got one dime, and you're trying to get to fifty dollars. Wait, how much is okay. ten cents back if then? If you're making a, we've already talked about it. Just know that a dime getting to fifty is going to take a long time. I do. Okay. Fifty cents. Um. To, all right. We have to get fifty more buckets of berries to at least get fifty dollars. That'd be if he had a dollar, but he's right. only making a dime. Five hundred more. Okay. Once Grandpa asked me what I did with the money I earned. I told him I was saving it to buy some hunting dogs. I asked him if he would order them for me when I'd saved enough. He said he would. I asked him not to say anything to my father, and he promised me he wouldn't. I'm sure Grandpa paid little attention to my plans. That winter, I trapped harder than ever with the three little traps I own. Grandpa sold my hides to fur buyers who came to his store all through the fur season. Prices were cheap. Fifteen cents 
for a large possum hide, 25 for a good skunk hide, but he's still only making change. Little by little, the nickels and dimes added up. The old KC baking powder pan can grew heavy. I could heft its weight into the palm of my hand. With the straw, I'd measure from the lip of the can to the money. As the months went by, the straws grew shorter and shorter. The next summer, I followed the same routine. Would you like to buy some crawfish or minnows? Maybe you'd like some fresh vegetables or roasting ears? The fishermen were wonderful as true sportsmen are. They seemed to sense the urgency in my voice and always bought my wares. However, many was the time I'd find my vegetables left in the abandoned camp. So they were buying them just to help him out, but were they eating his veggies? No. Nope. But still good. There was never a set price. Anything they offered was good enough for me. A year passed. I was 12. I was over the halfway mark. I had $27.46. He's getting there. My spirits soared. I worked harder. I'm going to pause here. It's now been a whole year. year. And he only has $27. You got $27. Are those pups still available? Oh, okay. the camera. Oh, yeah. Do what? Kendall, or no, sorry, Josie. Um, maybe he could like instead. They probably aren't there anymore, but maybe he will find another thing, uh, another ad for hounds, and then he could use his fifty dollars because he already saved it up. Um, so then he doesn't have to work extra. And maybe he'll be lucky and find another um, set of pounds for fifty dollars. Zico, what do you think? Okay, so if you like think about this, like, so there's breeders that like get the dogs and sell them. Like the breeders don't just like get one; they don't put out an ad and then breed like fifty dogs and then stop. They keep doing it if it's a success. So they're probably still breeding coonhound puppies. So they'll probably still be there. All right. So Zeke is hoping this isn't just a person that happened to have two pups for sale, that it's actually a breeder that is constantly breeding red bone coon hounds. But it's less likely for this is back. DJ says that's not as likely because this was back in the day and maybe breeders weren't a common thing back then. Okay. Maggie's got her hand raised. Um, I don't think he's going to quit because I feel like he's really determined to get what he's going. He's definitely really determined. Um, as Maggie said, he's not going to quit. Um, Sophie. I don't know if you're still in their puppies because he just wants them. He wants them so bad. He's not, I don't know if he's thought this through that taking that long to save might not work out for him. Sean. Okay. I don't think he's going to do it because the book week is big and... Um, like, he may have to use that money to help his family. Maybe they're going to, like, they almost lose that cat, their farm, and he has to use it. They don't have any money. So All right. Is, is Sean's he, saying maybe he's going to end up having to use his money to help his family, who is obviously not very well off. Maggie, again. Um, he, what if he realizes that he can't really, like, do $50 and he does just does like do the price for one, one okay dog. so he only decides to spend the money on one well, dog because he he's got enough for one dog right now yeah there's and two dogs. The rest he wanted two dogs sophie said there's two dogs on the cover yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> so there's that yeah. um uh zeke i like the other one so um like another thing <laughs> about like what dj said like uh Dogs were, like, really common back then. I don't think it would be, like, more rare for breeders to be around back then because, like, dogs were, there were, like, a lot of people had dogs back then. They relied on them to hunt and things like that. So people bred them to make money. So I think there were a lot of breeders back then. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Another year crawled slowly by. And then the great day came. The long, hard grind was over. I had it, my $50. I cried as I counted it over and over. As I set the can back in the shadowy eaves of the barn, it seemed to glow with a radiant whiteness I had never seen before. 
Perhaps it was all imagination. I don't know. Why do you think his can seemed to glow? Because I'm Macy, why do you think it's full of money? It's full of money. And Maggie. He completed his goal, he, and it just makes him feel good. happy. Where he did yeah, yeah, he completed this goal. He's now worked two whole years at this goal. He just finally completed it. You want to talk about it? it's a rare day? Feels like great. Like he's feeling happier than he's probably ever felt because he genuinely worked a hundred percent on his own. His family didn't even know what he was doing to save up. So he's got this like tremendous feeling of what? Well, how is he? How's Billy feeling inside right now? So happy, so excited. Happy, excited. Completed. Completed. He feels complete right now. I love that word, Macy. Um, Kendall, how is he feeling? He feels like he's accomplished. Yeah, that was the word I was thinking of. Very accomplished. Proud of himself. Um, I love that Macy used the word complete. Like, yes. Like, all is well in the world. And so, yes. Not only is maybe the can seeming glowing because it's full of coins, but like imagining that it's just glowing because it's kind of like in the movies where it's just like, oh, like that kind of a thing because he's met his goal, right? And he's just over the moon. Okay. And Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet when Vanellope goes into that princess room. Okay. I'm trying to remember that. All right. Okay. Sing. Here we go. He's got his money. It's fifty dollars. Lying back in the soft hay, I folded my hands behind me, closed my eyes, and let my mind wander back over the two long years. I thought of the fishermen, the blackberry patches, and the huckleberry hills. I thought of the prayer I had said when I asked God to help me get those two hound pups. I knew He had surely helped me, for He had given me the heart, courage, and determination. Early the next morning with the can jammed deep in the pocket of my overalls, I flew to the store. Did he actually fly? No. What does that mean? He, could have, he, he could just ran, ran really fast to the store. Ran really fast? What kind of figurative language is that? Idiom. Idiom. Idiom, yeah. Common phrase that doesn't actually mean what it literally says. Okay. As I trotted along, I whistled and sang. I felt as big as the tallest mountain in the Ozarks. What figurative language Simley. is that? Simley. How do you know? Because as. as. I felt like. Why does he feel as big as the tallest mountain? Because he did it. He did it. Okay. Arriving at my destination, I saw two wagons were tied up at the hitching rack. I knew some farmers had come to the store, so I waited until they left. As I walked in, I saw my grandfather behind the counter. Tugging and pulling, I worked the can out of my pocket and dumped it out in front of him and looked up. Grandpa was dumbfounded. He tried to say something, but it wouldn't come out. He looked at me, and he looked at the pile of coins. Finally, in a voice much louder than he ordinarily used, he said, Where did you get all of this? I earned it. I told you, Grandpa. I said I was saving my money so I could buy two hound pups, and I did. You said you'd order them for me, and I've got the money, and now I want you to order them. Grandpa stared at me over his glasses and then back at the money. How long have you been saving this? He asked. A long time, Grandpa, I said. How long? He asked. Uh, two years, I told him. His mouth flew open in a loud voice. He said, two years? I nodded my head. Is that fast? The way my Grandpa stared at me made me uneasy. I was on needles and pins. Taking his eyes from me, he glanced back at the money. He saw the faded yellow piece of paper sticking out from the coins. And he worked it out, asking as he did, what's this? I told him it was the ad telling him where to order my dogs. The paper ad from two years ago. Maybe that's, that's just sad. Macy says, well, that's just sad. Um, all right. Okay. He read it, turned it over, and glanced at the other side. I saw the astonishment leave his eyes and the friendly old grandfather look come back. I felt much better. Dropping the paper back on the money, he turned, picked up an old turkey feather duster, and started dusting where there was no dust. He kept glancing at me out of the corner of his eyes as he walked slowly down to the other end of the store, dusting here and there. He put the duster down, came from behind the counter, and walked up to me. 
Laying a friendly old work calloused hand on my head, he changed the conversation altogether, saying, Son, you need a haircut. I told him I didn't mind. I didn't like my hair short. Flies and mosquitoes bothered me. He glanced down at my bare feet and asked, How come your feet are all cut and scratched like that? I told him it was pretty tough picking blackberries barefoot. He nodded his head. It was too much for my grandfather. He turned and walked away. I saw the glasses come off and the old red handkerchief come out. I heard the good excuse of blowing his nose. He stood for several seconds with his back towards me, and when he turned around, I noticed his eyes were moist. What What's going on with Grandpa right now? He's crying. Why is Grandpa crying? I don't know. Maybe they're out of the dog and working on that money. Grayson, why is Grandpa crying? He's left on the back. Because, um, I would say he's, he's kind of... I would say maybe he's jealous of him because he did more work than him in two years. No, okay, are, Grayson says maybe jealous. Grandpa is jealous because of all the work and all the money that Billy has earned. Jason, what do you think? I think he's proud. He's proud? That he's accomplished a goal, one of his goals that he's been wanting. But he's also maybe disappointed because... It's been two years. Those dogs most likely could have been okay. already. So Jason said he's proud because his grandson worked so hard. He accomplished his goals. Accomplished his goals. And like he noticed that he needed a haircut. He noticed that his feet were all tore up from picking blackberries to help earn and the money. Paper was too so it old. wasn't easy for Billy to earn this money. No. Are there other things that Billy probably should be spending the money on? Maybe. Such as? Food. Shoes. Hair. Haircut. Food. I don't think they're hurting for food. It hasn't mentioned that he's hungry. But definitely, he's literally, it's mentioned he's barefoot a couple of times now. Do we think Billy has shoes? No. Doesn't even have shoes. Wandering around summer, winter, in thorn bushes. No shoes. It's cold as we get in winter. Okay. All right. So grandpa's, I, I would agree with the grandpa's proud. Um, Miss Bab, Cameron's raising her hand about uh, the white grandpa's. Right. You're like all quiet and patient down there. Cameroon, what do you have to say about it? I think that he definitely feels a sense of accomplishment for his grandson because he did this ginormous thing that nobody else could dare do and he just feels very very proud of him agree yeah he knows in his mind he knows how much work and how much dedication that billy had to have for two long years like his grandpa sees the value in what billy has done and that work ethic and so he's just yeah he just kind of overcome with emotion on what billy has accomplished dj i think it's because he realized what we realized is that that ad is probably already gone. So he just spent two years getting in their time, like that's $50 on our $1,000. And the dog started to up for sale. Right. And DJ says maybe he also is feeling kind of what we're feeling like you work so hard and those dogs probably aren't even available anymore. So, all right, we're going to keep reading. All right, his eyes were moist. In a quavering voice, he said, Well, son, it's your money. You worked for it and you worked hard. You got it honestly and you want some dogs. We're going to get those dogs. And I'm not going to read those next two little sentences. Um, that was as near as I, it was a cuss word for those of you that haven't picked up your books yet. Um, I, I'll say this. We're going to get those dogs, be darn. And you can infer from there if you don't have your book in front of you. Um, that was as near as I ever came to hearing my grandfather curse. If you can call it cursing. And yes, I call it cursing. I'm not comfortable saying that <laughs> out loud. Um, all right. He walked over and picked up the ad again, asking, is this two years old too? I nodded. Well, the first thing we have to do is write this outfit. There may not even be a place like this in Kentucky anymore. After all, a lot of things can happen in two years. Oh, he's just already... Seeing that I was worried, he says, now you go on home. I'll write to these kennels and I'll let you know when I get an answer. All right. Well, that's positive because he called it a kennel. A kennel is like a breeder, right? Okay. So 
Um, it's not just a random person selling their yeah. one litter of pups. Okay. Um, if we can't get the dogs there, we can get them someplace else. And I don't think if I were you, I'd let my pa know anything about this right now. I happen to know he wants to buy that red mule from old man Potter. I told him I wouldn't. And I turned to leave the store. As I reached the door, my grandfather said in a loud voice, say, it's been a long time since you've had any candy, hasn't it? I nodded my head. He asked, how long? I told him a long time. Well, he said, we're going to have to do something about that. Walking over behind the counter, he reached out and got a sack. I noticed it wasn't one of the nickel sacks. It was one of the quarter kind. My eyes never left my grandfather's hand. Time after time, it dipped in and out of the candy counter. Peppermint sticks, jawbreakers, whorehound gumdrops. The sack bulged. So did my eyes. Handing the sack to me, he said, here, first big coon you catch with those dogs, you can pay me back. I told him I would. Why do you think Grandpa did that, Fiona? Um, because um, his Grandpa did it probably believe that he's actually going to keep his mind on getting those dogs. And he worked for two whole years to get that. And when, like, for now, if we're trying to get, like, 50 bucks now, we'll probably get that in, in, like, in like, a week. Right. But, um, or two days. Yeah, probably them. But, um... Now his grandfather is just so glad that he actually put his mind to it. That mm -hmm. he wants to pet around, like reward him somehow, not just with the dog, but yeah. you know, that he needs something more than no shoes, need a new haircut, plus he gave him some candy. All right, yeah. He wanted to reward him um, because, number one, we don't know if he's going to get the dogs. We don't know when the dogs are going to show up. But he wanted if to show Billy show he was proud of him and reward him for all of that hard right. work. Um, okay. All right. On my way home with a jawbreaker in one side of my mouth and a piece of whorehound in the other, I skipped and hopped, making half an effort to try and whistle and sing. And I couldn't for the candy in my mouth. I had the finest grandpa in the world and I was the happiest boy in the world. I wanted to share my happiness with my sisters, but decided not to say anything about ordering the pups. Arriving home, I dumped the sack of candy out on the bed. Six little hands helped themselves. I was well repaid by the love and adoration I saw in the wide blue eyes of my three little sisters. All right. The end of chapter three. Now, where did I put my chapter three papers? All right. We did a lot of discussion as we were going through this. So... I want you, today we are doing the enrichment portion of this. Now, virtual friends, listen carefully. This is another thing where I am not going to let you draw on Seesaw. I need you to find a piece of paper at home and actually draw and then take a picture of it and post the picture of it. Um, Lucas, I know your camera doesn't work really great. It's kind of blurry, so um, you can have mom take the picture and send it to me. Um, but I just know you can't draw well enough on Seesaw to do what needs to be done. So what you are going to do, and I, don't, I mean, I can hand this out to you, but it's just a practice ad. Um, you're going to make an advertisement for the two puppies that are for sale. Include anything that might catch their eyes. So I want it to be colorful. You need to include like flashy words on it that are going to catch their attention. So um, let's Google real quick. I'm going to present... Hang on. Yeah, you can. On the back of this, there is a ad. Um, I think I think that's scanned for you guys too. And it says, "Blow away the storm with a Honda." And then it has like, "Save a hundred dollars in like this fancy little like bubble." Um, and then it tells all about what it does. The Honda industrial engine, twenty-eight inch cleaning width, twenty-two inch clearing height. Electric start. No cords needed. Start it anywhere. Moves up to 1,900 pounds per minute, up to 52 feet. There's lots of exclamation points on that. That's why I'm like yelling it excitedly. Um, so when you look at an advertisement, it has a lot of words that make you want to buy it. So if you just write puppies for sale and then draw stick puppies, does that make me want to go buy your puppies? No. Okay. So... Hey, we started to 
Um, so like here's some, like you can see like the ads make you want to get it. Like look at this chick. She's like super excited to eat her candy bar. It's the chocolate. It's the nougat. It's the nuts. Um, three flavor candy bar. And it shows you all three flavors. What? You get three in one? Amazing. Um, this one tells you, you can fill the stockings, trim the tree. It's a gift. Decorate your table with it. What? Um, coconut. All right. Yeah. So. It looks like sushi. Looks like sushi. It's a yeah, baby wood yeah. bar. Yeah, the piece that's yeah, cut. Yeah. That's it's lit. You'll like it. It's smacking good. Um, How old are we? These are very old candy bar ads. Um, worth going out on a limb for. Um, so, I want you to create an ad for the pups. Um, and let me remind you what a red bone coon hound looks like as well. Here we go. Red bone coon hounds look like this. So, I would love to see your best, best efforts at drawing pups for sale. Something that's going to make me want to buy a pup. You will need a blank piece of paper to draw this. Um, there is blank paper behind Parker and Gray on that shelf back there. Um, and then, yes, virtual friends. Just find any old piece of paper. And um, hop to it. And then you guys can take a picture when you are done. Sound good? Yes, Bab. Yeah. I don't have the seesaw assignment when I'm in... Okay, oh, I will send it to you. Kendall and Zeke, I forgot to send it to you this morning, so I will send it right now. Okay.